Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to master the autumn colors and autumn look using the tools in Luminar Neo. It's going to be lots of fun. We're going to look at things like white balance, enhanced AI, selective colors and so much more. So if you're ready, let's start right now. OK, so moving into Luminar Neo, where we're going to start in the catalog module. I already have the sample file here, as well as the result we're going to be trying to create. Now, if you want to follow me along on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample file and start editing with me. So once you download the sample file, add it into Luminar Neo, then select it and move it into the edit module. Now, just to let you know what I did, I basically applied a basic enhancement or basic development using the develop row. I cropped the image and that's that. Now, this is a view of a little forest path that I captured last year. It was somewhere around end of October, beginning of November. You can see the colors are there, but there is much more we can do to make this image work. So after we apply the basic development, we can move on the other tools in the application. The first thing I would do is to balance everything with the use of Enhance AI. So we're going to move into our main editing toolbar, open the Enhance AI and simply take the Accent AI and increase it. By doing that, we basically just balancing everything, opening the shadows, balancing the colors, contrast and everything. So I think for this image, let's have a look. I think if we start around 40, that will work quite well. So simple enhance AI. After this, we're going to adjust the white balance. For the typical autumn capture, we want much more warmth and maybe a touch of magenta. At this moment, you can see the image is quite cool and there is lots of green tint. So to adjust this, we're going to go into the develop tool and here we're going to open the color section. On the top, we have the adjustments for the white balance where we have the temperature and tint. So I mentioned we want to make it warmer. So for that, we're going to use the temperature slider. Simply take the slider and increase it. And immediately when we start to do that, you can see how we're getting much better look. So let's have a look at it. We want quite lots of warmth. So I think let's start around 12. After that, we're going to also adjust the tint. As I mentioned, there is a lot of green there. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the tint and move it towards the purple magenta side. Now, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to make it purple, but I think that looking at the image somewhere around, let's say 20 will work quite well. Don't forget to always keep checking the before and after using the little eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. Or you can also look at the full before and after using the eye icon in the bottom part of the screen. So that's that. That's the adjustment for the white balance. We can close the develop tool and we're going to continue. Now we're going to be focusing on the traditional autumn colors and we're going to enhance them separately. For this, we need to use the color tool. So we're going to open it. And in the color tool, we're going to find the HSL panel. To open it and see it, you need to click on it. So once we do that, we can just make sure that you can see the screen and let's have a look at the HSL panel. With the HSL panel, you can adjust the hue, saturation and luminance of the main colors in your image. So let's click on the gray dropdown box and switch it to saturation. What we want to enhance and what we want to make more saturated are your reds, orange, yellows and greens. Those are the traditional colors for the autumn look. So let's start with the orange. Let's increase it. And basically what we're doing, we're just picking the orange colors in the image and making them more saturated. We can do the same with the yellow. So let's have a look at it. I think a little bit more of the yellow, maybe a touch with the red, but there is not much red color there, but still somewhere around 10. And with the green, we can just add a little bit somewhere around 11. So for the moment, that's it for the saturation. 
Now we're gonna again click on a gray drop down box and switch it from saturation into the hue. With the hue, we can actually switch the hue of the different colors. And specifically, what we're gonna be adjusting is the green. So again, there is a lot of green there. So instead of keeping it green, we're gonna take the slider and bring it down. And by doing that, we adding much more yellow into the greens in the image. For example, keep an eye on this part right here. When I return it, it was quite green there. And when I bring it down, it turns yellow. So we're getting much more of that autumn look. So with the green, let's go to minus 60. It's up to you, but for me, the minus 60 works very well. After that, we're going to adjust our yellows. We can turn them more towards green or we can make them much more orange. And actually, I like the orange. Now, we don't want to overdo it because that way we would remove all the yellow. But I think somewhere around, let's say, minus 15 works quite well. With the orange color, let's see if we add a little bit of the red into the orange. I think that can work quite well. Or we can go the other way around and pretty much remove the orange and just work with yellows. But we don't want to do that. We just going to go to somewhere around minus 10. Let's have a look at it. Let's see the before and after. And slowly we are getting there. Now we have one more thing to adjust and that's the luminance. So moving into luminance, again, we're going to be working with our colors on the top. And basically, we're just going to add brightness into these colors. So with the red, we can make it much more brighter by increasing the slider. With the orange, the same thing. With the yellow, let's have a look. Yeah, again, we can make it brighter somewhere around 10. And with the green, we can make it darker or brighter. But I think that actually we can make it a little bit darker. So somewhere around minus 50. Again, let's have a look at the before and after, and we definitely getting there. So close the HSL panel, close the color tool, and let's keep moving on with our edit. The next thing we want to add to enhance the autumn feel is glow. Now we can use number of tools to do that, but my favorite one is the mystical tool. So let's go into the mystical tool, Again, make it nice and visible. And basically what we're going to do, we're just going to take the slider and increase it. The advantage of using the mystical tool is that it not only adds a glow, but it also works with contrast, warmth and the overall look. So I like to add quite a lot, let's say somewhere around 50. But again, it is really up to you on what you want to achieve with your image. But for me, 50 looks very good. So again, let's close the mystical tool and we're going to continue. So with the mystical tool, we have applied very nice but gentle glow to the entire image. But on top of it, I would like to add a little bit more attention towards the center of the photo right here. And I would like to add more glow there only to that specific part. So for this, we're going to use the actual glow tool, again, located on our main editing toolbar in the creative section. So we're going to open it and we're going to switch between the different options here. Let's say that we're going to go for the Orton effect soft. Once we do that, we're going to increase the amount. And again, we're going to keep an eye on the center of the photo. That's where we're going to apply it. So let's have a look at it. I think maybe somewhere around 30 looks good. And while we have it applied, let's see the other effects. So Orton effect itself is quite nice too. Glow, you almost can't see it. And the soft focus actually looks quite nice too. That adds a really nice glow there. So I think if we adjust it a little bit more to somewhere around 20, that looks quite good. So as I mentioned, I would only like to see the glow in this part of the photo, not everywhere. So to do that, we're going to use simple masking. So come back to the tool, click on masking. And here we can use multiple different options. But for this, let's just use a simple radial gradient. With that selected, we can now basically drag the gradient in our image, adjust the size and using the point to basically adjust its location. So we would like it here. Then we can adjust the shape and basically just cover that part of the photo. Once we're happy, we can return into the adjustments and see if it does what we want. 
Let's have a look at it. If we increase a little bit of the glow to somewhere around 25, I think that does exactly what I was looking for. Again, let's have a look at the before and after, and I think it looks very nice. So one more time, we have used the mystical tool to apply gentle glow and that kind of mystical look to the entire image. And then for a specific part of the photo, we have used the glow tool in a combination with masking. By doing that, we have added an extra attention towards the center of the image and also created an additional and natural depth. Now, talking about that, we can play and work with it even further. So for this, we're going to be using the blur tool in the creative section. So let's go ahead and open the blur tool. Uh, let's make sure that we are on the Gaussian blur. And for the time being, keep an eye on this part of the photo. So we're going to take the amount slider and increase it. And basically what we're trying to create is that kind of out of focus area in the front of the photo. So we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to go as far as this. We just want a nice gentle blur right here. So I think somewhere between eight or 10 can work really well. Now, as I mentioned, I would like to apply it only to the front of the photo. So again, we're going to be using masking and to make it a little bit more natural, we're going to be using the linear gradient. After that, we can drag it from the bottom up and basically looking at it, it has a three lines at the bottom. That's where the full red is. This is where all the blur is applied. After that, from the first line all the way up, basically it goes from 100% opacity to zero. So here we have 100% of the tool and here we have zero. And by using the gradient, it will just look a little bit more natural. So let's have a look at it. I think something like this could work really well. Again, once we're happy, let's go back into the adjustments and have a look at it. I think it looks really cool. Let's have a look before and after. And it's a gentle adjustment, but again, it helps with the depth. So for now, we can close the tool, but actually to really finish it off and make it look like the camera was focusing only on this part of the photo, we need to apply another blur towards the end of the path. So one more time, let's open the blur tool. We are still on the Gaussian effect. Keep an eye on this part and increase the amount. Let's have a look again, very gently, maybe to somewhere around five. Once we have the right amount selected, we're going to go into the masking and this time we're going to use brush. Make sure that you are on paint, adjust the size, softness on 100, yes, strength on 102. And now just one click and the blur is only going to be applied wherever we are going to brush. So I think into this area. Now let's have a look at it. That looks really cool. So somewhere around here. Again, let's have a look at the before and after. And it's another gentle adjustment that just really makes the entire photo work. Once we finish with the blur, let's close it and again continue. But just before we're going to do that, a quick reminder that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Autumn Bundle. Get over 721 new autumn elements, including skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, working layers, LUTs, and presets, and transform your autumn images with just a few clicks. To get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now talking about depth, and adding an extra attention towards a specific part of the photo, the traditional technique to do this is vignette. So for this, we can use a simple vignette tool in an essential part of our main editing toolbar. So let's go there and open the vignette tool. Once we're here, let's take the amount slider and bring it down. Now we want to bring it down quite a lot because we want to see the border of the vignette. So let's go to minus 87. After this, we're going to click on choose subject and position it into the area we are looking for. So I think somewhere around here. 
when finished, again, click on choose subject and adjust the size. So let's have a look at it. I think that the 43 will work well. After that, we're going to open the advanced settings and adjust the roundness. So let's have a look at it. I think we need to just adjust it a little bit to, let's say, minus 20. We can add extra feathering, I think a little bit, maybe to somewhere around 20, and then finish it off by adding a little bit of inner light into the center of the vignette. So basically, we have the vignette and the center will get a little bit brighter. So for me, plus 14, plus 15, yeah, that looks really good. Now, of course, that the vignette is way too strong, so we need to come back to the amount and just bring it up until we like the result. So let's have a look at it. Let's start with minus 65 and double check the before and after. And now it's looking really good. So what we can do, we can close the vignette tool and let's check the before and after using the eye icon at the bottom of the screen. So this is where we started and this is where we are. Now to finish it off, when I'm finished editing the image, I like to add one more layer on top of everything to blend it nicely together. For this, I like to use the mood tool in the creative section. So let's go ahead, let's go into the mood tool where we can click on a choose LUT gray drop down box. Once we do that, let's go into the cinematic toning where then we can hover over the different LUTs and see what they do to the photo. Now, this will be completely up to you to see which look you prefer. But for example, for me, the long beach really looks well. So let's click on it and apply it. And let's have a look at the before and after. And as you can see, the difference isn't that big. However, if you would see it in 10 or maybe 15 minutes, you would see how really the LUT just brings everything together. So one more time, let's have a look at the before and after, or we can also use the slider where you can really see how we have transformed the image from very average forest capture into beautiful autumn image. And just like that, we have finished with today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any questions about today's topic, or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, my name was Jacob Bors and I can't already wait to see you in our future videos.